Welcome to Science Easy Tech channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about probability sampling methods. This was taken from Unit 5 that is sampling and sampling process as well as methods of data collection. This is my part 3 video. This video will be useful for BSc nursing students, post basic BSc nursing students as well as students who are studying MSc nursing. Before moving on to the topic, if you are new to Science Easy Tech channel, just take a moment to subscribe our channel and also to press the notification bell icon in order to get connected with our latest updates. Let's move on to the types of sampling techniques. Already we have discussed about non-probability methods. Under sampling technique, you have probability or non-probability. Under non-probability sampling methods, already the video have been posted. If you have not watched those video, I have given the link in description box of nursing research and statistics playlist. So in this video, we are going to only discuss with the probability sampling techniques that is simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, systemic random sampling, cluster random sampling and uh, sequential sampling. So here you are going to see about simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, systemic random sampling, cluster sampling and sequential sampling. So one by one we can see. So the content what we are going to discuss in this video is exclusively probability sampling content. So under probability sampling, what is probability? Probability means chance. So everyone is having a chance to get entered into the study. So probability it wants random selection of the elements of the population. So in this every subject in your population has an equal chance to be selected as a study sample. So in mathematics we will be learning probability. Suppose if you are tossing a coin the probability of getting head as well as tail is going to be the same. So like that in the study if there are 50 members in a class everyone will be having an opportunity to enter into the study if you want to select 30 members out of the 50 anyone has a chance to get into the study so that is called as what probability sampling so what are all the characteristics or features of this probability sampling technique the samples are gathered in a process that gives all the individuals in the population equal chance of being selected so out of those 50 anyone can get selected suppose out of the 50 names you are going to put into lottery method and if you are going to pick up the lots means anyone's name can come so you may not know only this particular name will come this particular name will not come you cannot tell you cannot predict okay so the researcher must guarantee that every individual has an equal opportunity for selection for the study. The advantage of using random sampling is the absence of both systematic and sampling bias. So in non-probability sampling methods, everywhere we are telling one major disadvantage is what? Bias. So here you are avoiding both systematic as well as sampling bias. So under this we have so many techniques we have seen. So the first sampling technique is simple random sampling technique. So in this every member of population has an equal chance of being selected as subjects. The entire process of sampling is done in a single step. So within a single step procedure you will be completing it. That's why it is called as simple random sampling technique. So with each select subject selected independently of the other members of the population. So under this simple random sampling there are some uh, criteria or prerequisites. So the sample should be homogeneous. Okay. Suppose if I am doing on uh, third year students, nursing students means everyone should represent the third year nursing students. Okay. Uh, population must be homogeneous. Researcher must have list of elements of accessible population. Whoever he can act says that a researcher should take a list and from that list only you are going to select the samples in a randomized manner. So under this uh, the uh, methods what you can use in simple random sampling method is as I have told earlier in many examples lottery method that is uh, in a bowl you have to write all the names of who are going to get participate in the study. So there are 100 names of whom you are going to select means out of that 100 uh, put all the 100 uh, names in the uh, box then you can uh, or a bowl then you can uh, uh, pick up out of that 60 is your sample size means from that 100 you can take 60 so this is a blindfolded researcher then picks number tag from the bowl see here they have told that uh, each one each member is assigned a population number one number two number three number four like that you will be writing the names so uh, suppose if uh, you are 60 members in your class so out of that i don't know i do each member will be having an attendance role so i don't know so, so i will be writing one two three four five six like that in about 16 names means out of that i'll be picking the lots so uh, lots if i am picking 
so whichever name comes they will be in the participant whichever number comes they will be as a participant so all the individuals having numbers picked by the researcher or subjects of the study so out of 100 students you have taken 60 students for your study by using lottery method so use of table of random numbers so random number tables are available in random table several numbers are in either rows and in columns researcher initially prepares a number list of the elements of the population and with a blindfold choose a number from the table and in the table itself uh, the researcher will be um, uh, cl closing her eyes uh, by a uh, yeah, cloth and he will be touching that random number whichever number he touches that number um, uh, person will be included in the study so, uh, similarly you can use some computers also nowadays this random table instead of going in for random table a book uh, or uh, print out now computers from the computers itself you can randomly pick uh, you have what uh, for this uh, random picking apps are also available to pick the uh, subjects okay so it is very easy to get the subjects to assemble the subjects it is also considered as a fair way of selecting the subjects uh, it requires minimum knowledge about population it is free from sampling errors and sampling bias this is one of the best unbiased probability methods of sampling so it is very very simple easy to do and there is no sampling bias uh, uh, everything so within a short period of time you can do it next what are all the demerits so this method does not make use of knowledge about population I don't know in Maris there is nothing uh, to need to be known about the population as much. So here uh, without knowing the population you are doing sometimes. Uh, lots of procedure is needed for do before doing a sampling. Uh, then expensive sometimes it is expensive sometimes it is time consuming process also. Next is stratified random sampling. So this method is used for homogeneous population in this the researcher divides the entire population into different homogeneous subgroups or strata and then randomly selects the final subjects proportionally from the different strata so here i told you there in a simple random sampling homogeneous groups so here heterogeneous groups you are doing it on different groups and you are dividing the entire population into strata or small small groups and from that groups you are uh, groups or subgroups you are taking the population whatever you are required by means of uh, stratified random sampling so under that you have proportionate stratified sampling and non-proportionate stratified random sampling so under proportionate stratified random sampling in this the sample chosen from each stratum is in proportion to the size of the total population so here whatever the sample you are choosing from each strata so i told suppose if you are dividing the population into 10 subgroups out of that 10 subgroups uh, so in each group you are having 100 100 members so out of that whom you are going to select from each subgroup you will be selecting 20 20 so if you want to do a study for 200 subjects and already the entire population you have divided into 10 subgroups under each subgroup you are having 100 100 population strata group subgroup each subgroup contains 100 members out of those 100 members under each subgroup you are going to take 20 so 20 into 10 is equal to 200 subjects so like that you have to take it correctly okay so that is called as proportionate stratified sam sam random sampling this proportionate stratified random sampling is just opposite to that here the samples chosen from each stratum are not in proportion i told no so out of that 10 subgroups each uh, subgroup you are having 100 100 members means in first subgroup you can take 5 in second subgroup you can take 10 in third subgroup you can take 30 also so like that uh, totally it should come to 200 so there is no uh, particular criteria that in each group you have to take the same number of subjects so that is just opposite to that of proportionate this disproportionate is that opposite to that of proportionate stratified random sampling next to moving on to merits and demerits merits it ensures representation of all groups of the population so it represents the general population next is researcher also employs this sampling when they want to observe existing relationships 
relationship between two or more groups suppose if they are going to do urban group rural group uh, okay prevalence of anemia in urban population and rural population in such cases and all no you can use this method of sampling with this sampling researcher can representatively uh, sample even the smallest and in most accessible subgroups in population so even the smallest subgroups also he can take into consideration and there is a high statistical precision so high statistical significance when they are going to do this stratified random sampling compared to that of simple random sampling next is demerits proportionate stratification requires accurate information on the proportion of the population see proportionate i told no in each and everything you have to take the correct criteria uh, same criteria of samples or sp same numbering not criteria criteria more or less it is numbering of samples then larger preparation must be available from which you can divide the group into smaller strata so from larger population you can divide the group into small small uh, samples next is systematic random sampling so it can be linked to an arithmetic progression where in the difference between two consecutive numbers is the same for example if i am taking first sample next i am going to take a um suppose if i am going to say 10th sample 10th number then i am going to take 20th number then i am going to take 30th number suppose if there are 100 students okay 100 students are uh, sorry suppose if there are 1000 uh, students in your college out of the, right all the 1000 names uh, then, uh, then uh, every 10th student i am going to take for the study okay that is uh, the difference between the uh, sample should be in sequence that is systematic random sampling it can be linked to an arithmetic progression where in the difference between two consecutive numbers are the same so for suppose as i have told suppose if 100 samples i am going to take every third sample out of that 100 samples i am going to how i am going to select every third person is my subject like that okay so it involves the selection of every kth person it involves the selection of every kth case from list of a group example um as i have told every third person or every fifth person like that okay every fifth person means 5 10 15 20 25 30 like that it goes on so k is equal to n divided by n n is what that um number of subjects in the target population where a small n is number of samples how much you have to collect for example if their target population is 1000 number of samples how much you have to collect is 100 okay so 1000 divided by 100 is 10 so every 10th sample you have to take 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 210, like that uh, till uh, it should it uh, continues till uh, you are 1000 samples so that totally you will be getting 100 samples. So the formula is K is this formula you should not forget K is equal to N capital N divided by small n. Next, the merits are convenient and very simple to carry out. Distribution of samples is spread even over the entire population because the kth sample, the entire population is taken into consideration. Less cumbersome, time consuming and it is very uh, cheaper, very easy to do also. And uh, demerits, uh, if first subject is uh, not randomly selected, then it becomes non-random sampling technique. Even the first subject what you are going to select that also you have to follow the randomized method sometimes this may result in biased sample also okay cluster sampling so cluster sampling means random selection of sampling unit consisting of population elements then from each selected sampling unit a sample of population elements is drawn by a either simple random selection method or stratified random sampling method so here clusters or groups from the groups you are going to use either simple random sampling methods or uh, stratified random sampling methods and you are going to select the subjects so this method is used in case where the population elements are scattered over a wide area and it is impossible to obtain the list of all elements so from subgroups from small small groups you can or clusters you can collect the samples by means of either simple random sampling or stratified random sampling method so types are here you have one stage two stage or multi-stage like that and all okay one stage cluster sample this occurs when the researcher includes all the samples from all the randomly selected 
clusters as sample so from all random selected clusters they are going to take the uh, sample select the samples two stage means first this occurs when the researcher only selects a few number of samples from each cluster by simple or systematic random sampling there in one stage sampling so from a cluster they have selected the samples directly but here and uh, out of the two or three stage like that multi stage if it goes means from that again they are going to use either simple method or stratified random sampling method and they are going to select the samples so what are the merits this technique is very cheap quick and easy for large population large population can be studied and require only list of the members enables investigators to use existing divisions such as districts villages towns etc same cluster can be used again for study okay you can use the same if you are going to do the study once again means you can use the same cluster also and this technique is very cheap quick and feasible to a large population even large population they will be doing okay from states to districts districts to villages like that and all they will be doing okay demerits this technique has a high possibility of sampling error chances are there and if small homogeneous population is under study this technique is not very useful because sometimes no you need a, a heterogeneous group okay or large sample size group homogeneous group you need for doing this thing next next is sequential sampling so in this uh, the sample size is not fixed the investigator initially selects a sample and tries to make out inferences if not able to draw results he or she will be adding some more uh, subjects suppose if the researcher has taken 30 samples and if he is not satisfied uh, with the results then he will increase uh, it so that is called as what increase the sample size that is called as sequential sampling Merits facilitates to conduct study on best possible smallest representative sample. So initially they will be starting with simple um, minimal sample size. If they are satisfied they will leave it off. If they are not satisfied only they will be going for higher order uh, samples or higher number of samples. So helps in ultimately finding the inferences of the study. So you can find the inferences of the study or findings of the study very easily. Demerits it is not possible to study a phenomena which is needed to be studied at one point of time. Sometimes it may take some time also. Okay. So here at a particular point of time it is not possible to study about a characteristics of phenomena. Request repeated entries into the field to collect sample. So you have to collect the uh, sample repeatedly. Suppose I told no if you are not satisfied with 20 samples or 30 samples again you have to include some 5 more samples or 10 more samples as uh, as and when needed so again you have to go to the field and again you have to collect it so this is one of the demerit hope this video has given a detailed explanation about uh, probability sampling techniques as i have told earlier uh, introduction of sampling process as well as uh, non-probability sampling methods i have given in part one and part two videos respectively if you have not watched those videos i have given the link of uh, nursing research and statistics playlist as well as statistics separate playlist link is also available you can watch our channel playlist for more nursing related videos as well as statistic related videos thank you friends keep supporting to science easy tech channel